Hey everyone, welcome to the Chaos Weekly Community Call. It's March 22nd. I'm Elizabeth Barron. I'm the community manager. So welcome, welcome, welcome. We're super happy to have everybody here today. We have a pretty big group, so yay. You could literally be doing anything else and you chose to be here. So thank you for that. We appreciate you. Um, we'll drop the minutes in one more time. And of course, if you do not want to use your mic or camera, you don't have to, feel free to use the chat function in Zoom. We try to incorporate that in the meeting for anybody who's new here. I see a few new faces. Well, Mabel's sort of new. She's hung out with me all morning. So yeah. from office hours through Evolution yeah. Working Group, and now she's here. So welcome. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Hi. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot there, Mabel. Um, anyway, let's get to it. I can figure this out. How does, how does technology work? We don't know. There we go. All right. Move the chat over here so I don't miss anything. Awesome. Okay. Um, so if you would like to please add your name, I will add mine as well to the list of. Oh, Ray and I are having a thumb wrestle for the fight. <laughs> fight, and fight. I won. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Ray. No Sorry. worries. <laughs> um, a whole week sleeping through the night. Awesome. I love that. I wish I had that. I'm a little jealous, but I'm not going to lie. Um, I had a fantastic weekend. I hope everyone did as well. I went to, uh, flew into Tampa, Florida to see Green Day in concert with my son, who's 18. Wow. It was a music festival. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then That's I got awesome. Where's the t shirt? Yeah. Oh, I, I wore it yesterday. Okay. You didn't get to see it. So <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, it was a really awesome weekend and he's a senior in high school. So he's graduating. And so like yesterday I was just crying all day. Cause I'm just like, my son is leaving and I love, like, we're just buddies. Ah. So anyway, I'll try not to cry through this meeting, but if I get teary, you'll understand why. So there's a little context around that. Um, but I hope everybody's doing okay. I know things aren't great in other parts of the world. So i um, just want to send some thoughts out to them. And if anyone knows, I don't think we have any community members over in the Ukraine area, but if anyone does know of anyone, please, please let us know. Um, I would, that would be really helpful information if we had that knowledge. So please just let us know. Um, we'll see what we can do to help them. Um, but anyway, on a better note, uh, let's move on to the agenda. Uh, so the first thing is we just want to make sure everybody knew um, it's, a, it's a kind of a small group that attends the DEI badging meetings. However, if you are in that group or were considering coming to those meetings, um, just a couple of quick changes. They used to be a weekly cadence. We're switching to a bi-weekly cadence, um, but we're extending the length of the meeting. So they're an hour long every other week. Um, the next week is, or the next meeting is March 30th. And we also have the new Zoom link, uh, which is the chaos Zoom link. We were using a different one before, but now we're back on to the chaos. Zoom link. I think the also the idea is that eventually we will record these again and post them uh, on YouTube with the rest of the chaos meetings. So just want to make everybody aware of that. Do people have questions about that meeting or what DEI badging is like what what that is? Anything anybody wants to ask? Feel free. Okay, then we'll move on. Um, so from last week, uh, we decided we would want to have a, an update on the metrics models group. And we volunteered you, Matt G. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, if you don't want to do it, we can certainly find, we can voluntold someone else, but you were there. All good. So I have, okay. a, I have a few things in here. So one is, I think we've settled finally on a new template. So the link is there. It's I just had to get it in there really quickly, but um, and I can show you, or if people want to see like kind of an example that we've been working with. So um, just a quick story on kind of. Can you go back to the template? Just describing why the metrics. So again, metrics models are um, they're collections of the atomic metrics that are brought together in ways that are kind of meaningful, maybe more meaningful than just a single metric by itself. And so the why it matters is just an overview of why we would bring these, you know, half a dozen metrics together. 
Um, things you need to deploy this model. So it would be a really quick statement about, you know, you need software or you need to run interviews or you're probably gonna run, need to run surveys to deploy this metrics model. So it's to give people an understanding of, of what is needed. We then list all of the metrics um, in there in addition to um, uh, the, the difficulty, trying to describe the difficulty in deploying the metric. That's kind of a, um, like a, an educated guess, I would say, on our part on what it would take to deploy a metric and then different ways to actually produce that particular metric, whether it's sample survey and interview questions or a link to a Jupyter notebook uh, or a link to a, a public software deployment where you can actually see this model in practice. And so we would list all of the metrics and they would have a link out to the associated uh, chaos metric to describe it a little bit further and then references and contributors. And so that's the new the new model. I, I do need to make this a little bit clearer, at least in the template. Again, I was just kind of rushing last week to get this out of the metrics template and into the into the community or out of the metrics repository and into the community repository. So we're all good there. Um, so that's that. I don't know if anybody has questions on the template. But that was it's been kind of a long time coming. I think we're pretty good with it. Um, so if you could go back, Elizabeth, to the yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, so, oh, Matt, there's yeah. one thing I want to call out on that. By the way, thank you for doing that. It looks really yeah. good and really usable. Right. Um, I wanted to call out that um, there was one participant who felt that why it matters had kind of a negative overtone uh, as far as company facing communications went. Okay. So I just wanted to flag that. Um, yeah, we had changed it from why you should care. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To why <laughs> to maybe, why it matters <laughs> maybe this is the positive <laughs> i think this is the positive one <laughs> we could talk about it in the metrics model yeah, yeah. and honestly you know luke is like if it um yeah what problem yeah so as melba points out i mean very happy this is still kind of finalizing so we can maybe somebody else grab what melba just said what problem are you trying yeah. to solve right right could be another one and we can certainly talk through that, no problem there. So thank you, Lucas, and thank you, Melba, for that. Okay. Um, we, we are, in terms of kind of getting these metric models in front of people, we are um, working with, with folks like Kevin about integration with the website. I think the distribution is going to be slightly different than the way that we distribute um the metrics themselves so just kind of a note there i don't have a, a ton of input on that as i think we're still kind of sorting this out as to what the best way to get that done is um i know that that sean you have been working a lot on thinking how the metrics models can be deployed in augur software mm -hmm. so and not just Mm -hmm. Yeah, not just providing them as markdown files, but also as live living examples. I don't know if you want to comment on that. We, um, Rugaba uh, and I, one of your students, has built a metrics model using Augur data and Augur APIs, and it is released in the metrics the working group metrics models. And one of the things that we're aiming to do is make that model implementation and the definition of the model available for people to see in a live setting. And so we have some resources set aside to do that. And that's on a to-do list if you were, if you would. Will. If you will. <laughs> <laughs> I was going through all the W's that it could be. Um, so I think one of the things that has come out of the metrics model um, working group is like it's great to have these as markdown files, but we really need to kind of push towards um, like visual, like like actual implementations of these models where people can point the model at um, repositories that they care about if it's software deployable. Uh, so that's a, a big thing that we're we're thinking through right now. And then kind of to that last point, I think Sean and I were talking about this yesterday, and I think we need to, to maybe f try to find some funds that can help push this just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, kind of the same way that 
that we have done it for like the DEI self-reflection or even just working with the Sloan Foundation. So it's not a call out to this this call at all. Um, but I just want you to know that I, I think there's some some issues of scale that we're going to have to address that just on a biweekly call we may not be able to do. So we might need to to try to find a way to do some of this in a more concerted way uh, over the course of the next whatever six months. So just something that Sean and I were talking about. Um, so if you have questions on that, that's cool too. All right, I am done. Thank you, everybody. I guess I have a question for you, Matt. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Um, okay. Um, do you, so I see that you have a template. Um, is there any groups that have tried to fill it out? And I'm kind of curious how that's going. I mean, we were talking about it in the risk working group to see it might make sense to do metrics from all of this because a lot of the methods that we've been talking about are just, are just not really that usable in a vacuum. Um, so we thought a metric model might be the next logical step to help provide more guidance and context around what some of these, how these, some of these things could be used. So I was just kind of curious, is this ready for folks to take a stab at or like how, how would you like that to proceed in terms of testing? Yeah, so the answer is yes. So um, I don't have them in this list, Sophia, but I can put them here and I can put them in the chat. We do have a couple like kind of existing metrics models that follow this template. And it might help uh, with what you're talking about in risk is how you would bring about or bring together, you know, a set of whatever three to four atomic metrics that might be meaningful in a model. Um, so I'm happy to share those. And if you want to take a, if you want to give it a go uh, in the risk working group, that would be cool. And then I'm not quite sure what the workflow is yet. Like if you develop them in the the metrics models in the risk working group, like how we get those back to the metrics model working group and I'm not quite sure what that dynamic is uh, yet, but we can, I'm pretty confident we can figure that out. Cool, thanks. If you, uh, if you are working on metrics models in your working groups, it's, it's probably a good idea to have a discussion uh, in your working group kind of what the difference is between a between a focus area and a metrics model uh, because oftentimes those uh they're just they're they're kind of ways of organizing these metrics together but you just want to make sure that there's some consistency in in your your focus area versus uh metrics models and this this issue kevin raises or this question arose in the evolution meeting just now where we were starting to work on a code complexity metric model. And when we think about code complexity, unlike most of our metrics, it's not those, the underlying metrics would not look at activity. They would look at the current state of a repository at a point in time in terms of the number of lines of code, the complexity of those lines of code as measured through some kind of Kokomo or other algorithm and all of that is sort of a snapshot so these are snapshotty metrics that would be used to construct that metrics model and those are very different in terms of like what they are compared to most of our metrics and how we distinguish or identify that fact and where we do that i think is one of the questions Yeah, just just something to be aware of, because a lot of these metrics models are going to start to they will start to look a little bit like focus areas when you start thinking about them. So that's OK, right? Yeah, I think that's I think that's yeah. OK. I think you just want to make sure that you're uh, in the working group, that you're uh, mm -hmm. kind of consistent in how you are uh, separating those focus areas from your uh, from your metrics models, right? Because we we do kind of we use them in different ways. You know, the, the focus area is a, a bucket that allows us to to capture these atomic metrics, whereas the, the metric model is the those atomic metrics in a in a metrics model can exist in in many different focus areas. Or I should say the the metric from a focus area can exist in many I different models. Yeah, no, yeah. So, no, that's true. So, 
just just something to consider uh, when when you when we start looking at these because they're the way that we are organizing these metrics, their confusion could start to come into play. And I, I think fewer focus areas in working groups is probably better. So, uh, so um, few, I, fewer focus areas and more metrics models, I suppose, is, would be better. So Kevin, um, I, I think that that's um, a subtle point and we'd be good to document that so that new community members have an easier time working with it. And uh, I have to admit that I don't have a firm grasp. Yeah, I think that I think that's why it's something that we we need to talk about. And I think I think we we first talk about it in the working groups. Uh, All right. Thank you, everybody. I did put the example of responsiveness. I saw Elizabeth had it up on the screen there. So it's also in the chat. Is that? Uh -huh. Right. Any final questions, comments for Matt and or metrics models peeps? All right, I think we're going back around now back to the beginning, which is the DEI working group. Do we have anybody from that group that's here today that wants to provide an update next week for us? I'm not gonna be around next week. Um, I can do it. I'll do okay. It. It's an item for me, okay, perfect. Um, the next item on the agenda, uh, we dropped this here just for a point of discussion, I think was from the, someone remind me, from the value working group on Thursday, is that where this came up? Where we started talking about the, how we're doing the metrics review, and we just wanted to kind of bring it to the community just to let everybody kind of know how that's Oh, going. yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, I think it was in value. So um, just so everybody knows, uh, the original plan was for each working group to review old metrics themselves. And for whatever reason, that was not actually happening. <laughs> so, so myself and Matt and Kevin and Sean decided to take it upon ourselves and divide up the working groups. So we are gonna just take a look at each of the older metrics. And because there's some, um, besides some content changes, there are some just formatting changes that we need to make and some extra blurbs that are standard now that we need to include. Um, such as the uh, privacy statement and um, like the date of last reviewed and, and things like that. So um, right now we're going to be going through each of those metrics. And then if it, if it looks like it's something that needs to like be reviewed by the group, then we will bring it to the group and say, yeah, this metric, the language is all off. It needs to, it needs some fresh eyes because it's like five years old. So, um, so that's how that's going to go. Um, and then Matt and I went over this one in the DEI working group, which was a separate conversation, which is why we're bringing it here today to kind of bring all of these pieces together. Um, and this is kind of the process that we took to do it. And this was an example of um, the code of conduct at event was an example of, and I haven't actually added my changes yet. So that's going to be happening. But um, that was the one that's an old metric that we brought back up. We reopened the original issue. We're going to tag it with this tag. Um, and then we added the new checklist, the quality checklist that we have now. We added that. And so then we're going to, um, we're not going to try to push this through though with this release, which is why I haven't done it yet. So um, I don't want to confuse the issue because we have all these, you know, metrics candidates that are out there kind of waiting to go into this April release. So we didn't want to muddy the waters. And I'm great at doing nothing. So that is what I'm doing until that whole thing is gone. That's what I'm going to keep doing. So, but um, is there further discussion? Like I, I know that the four of us kind of wanted to bring it up, but is there more to talk about with this or questions or like, I don't really know. The one thing that we had talked about is if you are revisiting a uh, metric, it was to reopen the original issue and then just tag it with that label. That seemed, it seemed I, my guess was is that, I think we talked about this in value, that it was 
kind of the workflow of getting it done that might have been limiting this last time around. Like I just don't know how <laughs> to, to actually review and submit that review. Um, and then I think we would just issue that PR against the existing metric, the existing markdown file, and it, it should be okay in the next release from what I understand. I'm just gonna add that here. Okay. Yeah, and that way we can see exactly what changed and keep that paper trail together. Or not really paper, but yeah. E, e trail? I don't know how you would say that. Digital. Digital, digital, yes, that's the word we want. Digital trail, I love it. Okay. Um, yeah, anything else with this? Anybody have questions? As you can tell, this is a, a work in progress. This is the first real time that we've actually needed to go back and review. So it's we're kind of working through the process as we go, which is why um, it's been a little uh, ambiguous, a little confusing, but I think we're, I think at the end of it, it'll all make sense and we'll have a good process for the future moving forward. And we can get this in the handbook when we're able to actually get things in the handbook. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's why we're putting it here. So we can just, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yeah. Any other questions or comments or anything about that? Going once, going twice, all right. Um, that is, okay, so this is, I wanted to bring up the next thing is, um, I know last week we started talking about getting a few of the pieces in place for Chaos Con. Um, do we want to start, kick that off today? Chaos Con planning people? Yeah, probably so, I mean, can't hurt. We may as well. I think the things we were trying to figure out were, were uh, the date for the CFP and maybe a few other things, topics that we wanna hear about. Um, so, okay. So usually just for everybody who's new or if in case you forgot, um, chaos <clears throat> does a chaos con, which this year we're gonna do it in conjunction with um, OS Summit EU, September 13th through 16th in Dublin. Um, but so prior to that, we have to plan for it, imagine. Um, but instead of putting it yet another meeting on all of our calendars, what we do is we just end this weekly community call a little bit early so that people who are on the planning committee and are probably in this call anyway, um, can just stick around. So, um, we won't do it every single week, um, but occasionally we will do that. And today is gonna to be one of those days. So we usually end at half, half past um, when we're needing to have some time for the Chaos Comp Planning Committee. So um, that's what we're gonna do. So essentially what I'm saying is we have three minutes left in our regular meeting now, in case anybody wants to talk about something that can be talked about in three minutes. I did just put in the chat the data use statement, which has been merged. So this is going to be the link that we put in the metrics. Awesome. Um, I, I have something that I think might fit in the one and a half minutes remaining, and that is just a pointer to the conversation Matt and I were having uh, on Slack about um, additional badging and what the product implications of the really um, strong adoption of the DEI uh, badge are. Is that, what channel did that happen in? general. Okay, awesome. I'm sure Matt and I will chat about it, but I thought I'd mm -hmm. community. No, I appreciate that. It's kind of hard to bring all the conversations together. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to add a link to the data use statement is Lucas, I mean, I'll, I'll just kind of like reiterate what we were talking about, or at least what I thought we were talking about, which was with the success of the 
DEI um, badging, the event badging program. I mean, one of the things that I would really like to think about in 2022 is badging at the project level and how that could work. Um, there's obvious problems with it, just in terms of like capacity to review, like re-evaluation periods that a project would need to go through. Like there are all sorts of things that are gonna be different than event badging, but um, that shouldn't like get in the way of, of really trying to get this done. So that was my thought. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Great too, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, one of my thoughts too, Lucas, you had shared some stuff, but there is the um, open SSF. Is that what it is? Open SSF yeah. yeah. self certification program. I'm, I'm yeah, the, so I was thinking about that. And the CII best practices. Back. Yeah. The, the advantage of those is that they're self reflections. The disadvantage of those is that as um, the event badging program puts a human in the process to really do part of that evaluation yeah which i like for around dei and we wouldn't have that in these types of programs so i think um i i definitely have thoughts but i um should hold off because uh i've used more than that minute and a half okay <laughs> we can go to slack and have conversations there yeah, we can continue this in general. Um, if anyone needs a Slack invite, please let me know. Um, you can email me at elizabeth at chaos.community and I will make sure you get your way to our Slack and then you'll be plopped in general and the conversation will be there right in front of you. So, um, okay. Uh, oh, Melba's saying there is a Harvard paper that was published with Sean's help that recommended chaos. Hey, imagine. <laughs> yeah. We come full circle. We're recommending our own stuff. Awesome. Um, okay, so uh, it's 1230, my time, 1130, other people, and whatever 30, wherever you are. So uh, let's go ahead and close this. I'll stop sharing. Uh, if you're on the Chaos Comm Planning Committee, you want to stick around, that'd be awesome. If you're not, um, you are free to go and enjoy your day as you see fit. And we, again, appreciate you being here. We'll see you here next time. Same same place, same time next week. Now.